Internal parasites or sheep worms in our flocks in Australia continue to go unnoticed and continue to be a problem for our producers, which is why it's really important to keep on top of them and why I'm going to have a bit of a chat about that today. Sheep worms, they might go unnoticed in the flock, so we only see subtle signs such as a slight decrease in weight gain or the flock just might not be picking up as you would expect them to. Signs might also be really obvious, such as ill thrifty sheep, scouring and losing a fair bit of weight. The more important species of worms are found in the abomasum, which is the fourth ruminant stomach, and the small intestine, which follows on from the abomasum. Barber's pole worm, and its scientific name is Haemonchus contortus, is one of the more important worms that we see, and it's found in the, in the abomasum of sheep. Barber's pole is a blood-sucking parasite and so the blood that uh, the parasite consumes gives the female worms their characteristic barber's pole appearance, so the red stripes down the body. Female barber's pole worms can lay up to 10,000 eggs per day, which is why we tend to see high worm burdens with barber's pole infections and also why the threshold for the worm egg counts is high when we need to treat those. Barber's pole infections tend to occur in areas where there's summer dominant rainfall and also where we might experience wetter summers than usual. Barber's pole infections also tend to occur when we have a better season than normal and also can occur in sheep flocks in, air, in times when they are under a bit more stress. So for example, leading up to lambing and then in that eight weeks post lambing when their immune system is still working up to its normal level of function. The types of clinical signs that we see with barber's pole infections include so weight loss or failing to gain weight. They might, you might also see bottle jaw, which is accumulation of fluid around the jaw. We might also see lethargy, collapse and death as a result of the anemia. So we see two different types of scour worms in, uh, pr that predominate in Australia. And they are brown stomach worm and its scientific name is Teledorsagia circumcincta. We also see black scour worms and they're in the Trichostrongylus species. Each of these different types of worms, they are found in, so we can see both of them in winter dominant rainfall areas and we also tend to see the black scour worms in the summer dominant rainfall areas. These scour worms, so the brown stomach worm, as you can tell from its name, it's found in that fourth ruminant stomach, the abomasum, and then the black scour worm, it's found in the small intestine. So what we see with these worms, they cause damage and irritation to the gut lining, which can contribute to diarrhea, or also known as scouring, weight loss, collapse, and resulting in death. Mixed infections of both types of worms is actually worse than just one type of infection by itself. If you're seeing signs of barbus polar scour worms, the problem is already fairly advanced, which is why it's really important to make sure you're monitoring flocks regularly using a worm test, or as we also call it, a worm egg count. This enables you to see if you need to use a drench at all, and if you do, what type of drench would be best to use. So many factors can influence the type of drench that we use in worm burdens in our livestock. So that can include how many worms are present, the mix of worms are present, if there's any resistance to drenches present on the property, and also how long you want protection for. The parasite burden that's also present in the environment, so in our paddocks, and the class of stock that you might want to treat can also play a huge role in the type of drench that you choose. So Sheep CRC, they've developed the Paraboss website, which includes drench management and worm control strategies, and you can plug in the details that are relevant to your farm to ensure that you're managing parasite burdens on your property as best fits you. We need to control parasite burdens on properties for the to prevent the economic losses that they do cause, but we also need to understand that there is resistance to drenches about. And it's also really important to understand that the parasite doesn't act alone in this scenario. So also what comes into play is the parasite, the environment that it's living in, and the sheep host that it's on. And heaps of factors can affect this as well. So for example, the condition of the sheep, so the sheep that are in poor condition might be more susceptible. And also the year itself can really affect what we're seeing. So if there's more rainfall in a given year, that will affect the environment and the amount of ground cover that we're seeing in pastures. 
And while we can make general recommendations about the types of worm that we see on farm in Australian sheep flocks, it's so important to bring it back to your individual enterprise and what is going to be best suited to you. So if you have any questions or would like to get in touch with your local land services district vet, we can ensure that you're doing the best job for your farm.